You know, it's like you can sit on your ass waiting forever for something to happen, or you can do it yourself. If you want to make art that badly, you're going to steal what you need, and you'll make it. So, yeah, where did it all begin? Uh, suppose it began when I was in WH Smith's, the bookstore on the King's, no, on, yeah, on the King's Road. And uh, I was flicking through and I discovered this book called Subway Art. And I'd never seen anything like it before in my life. And it totally and utterly blew my mind. And it became my Bible. So I embarked on a lifelong journey into the world of graffiti. The thing with graffiti is, I just, when I, when I discovered it, I thought it was going to be the most dynamic, amazing art form ever. I thought it was going to change the world. So after about 20, 25 years of painting graffiti, I was kind of, I'd been arrested loads as well. So I knew the next time I got caught painting, I was going to get sent to prison. It was around this time that I started to discover this thing called street art. And I just, I saw street art as something that could possibly fulfill the promises that I believed graffiti had made to me right at the beginning. When we first started painting stuff on the street, there was a, there was a huge interest in what we were doing, but there was no, there wasn't a platform to sell anything. You know, there wasn't a gallery in the world that was interested in exhibiting the work of these, you know, basically they just considered us to be vandals. A lot of it was kind of DIY. You know, we set up our own gallery. We set up a company called Pictures and Walls, which produced screen prints of a lot of the artists that were like at the forefront of the street art movement. And we did it ourselves. And now all the galleries want us. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's crazy to, to go from, you know, a vandal to a street artist to then exhibiting your work at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles. Having your work in the permanent v &A collection, it's just, it's crazy. Graffiti writers don't give a fuck what anybody else thinks about what they're doing except themselves and other graffiti writers. And it's like, even to the point of like, the uglier the better. Whereas street artists, they really consider what they're painting, where they're painting, who's gonna see it. You know, the neighborhood that you're working in, they try to make a connection between what they're painting and the people that are gonna, you know, hopefully appreciate the artwork that you're gonna leave behind. A lot of us were living in kind of Hackney, kind of Shoreditch, Old Street area. And back then it was like, it was run down. It was like the poorest neighborhood in London. You know, loads of shops were just empty. And I just saw an opportunity where really easily I could just paint massive letters on each shutter, not really spelling anything out. I think I realized there was an audience straight away. So I was doing all this stuff for the daytime and just people's reaction to what I was doing. They're like, oh, you're the guy that does the shutters. Wow, we really like them. Come and do one round here. What do they say, what are they spelling out? You know, what does it mean? You know, that's the beauty of painting stuff in the street is you get, you get to meet your audience and you get to have conversations with people. It's like, well, I'm actually making a difference. I'm actually doing something nice. I'm doing something positive. I'm doing something that people like. And it's, you know, it's improving the quality of people's lives through art. I suppose the inspiration for this was, it was an amazing opportunity to say something and be a little bit sarcastic and a little bit cheeky, but then, you know, also do it in my kind of, you know, colorful kind of happy typography. Yeah, it's like, and another fine mess and another mess and another mess. And it's just like, what? When's it gonna end? And yeah, it won't end, but you know, we can have a bit of a laugh about it. And you're making the best out of a bad situation. I think people are aware that we're not trying to sell them anything. We're just trying to put a smile on somebody's face. And yeah, I, I really like that. And it, you know, it's just what street art's about, I suppose. You know, giving something back to people.
it's, it's inspiring to a younger generation of people to see this stuff on the street and, you know, and then maybe think, hmm, I could do that. I like art. There's, there's a massive audience of people that could be interested in art but aren't. And I think street artists are kind of, you know, a doorway into that world.